Hi, I'm Julie Smith David from the W.P. Carey School of Business at Arizona State University, and this is a short video to explain what ERP is. ERP is a three letter acronym for Enterprise Resource Planning, and each of those words was um, initially picked for this category of software because it really represented a major shift from the software that had come before. So from the enterprise standpoint, it was really important that this is software that's designed to help all of the organization, not just an individual department. And so as a result of having that company-wide view, it's important that there be a common set of data, that there's terminology that's used throughout the organization, and that really all of the processes can be integrated so that anyone within the organization can get a complete view of what's happening. And when we say complete view, that means more than just cash or inventory, but that these systems are actually going to do a better job of tracking things such as human resources and um, be able to make longer term predictions about financial representations, inventory values, etc. It can get, make those representations because of the planning that it has built into it. And so these systems not only capture what the historical point of view is, but actually are able to help support making the decisions so that the future is much more efficient and effective for organizations that are adopting them. Now, of course, all of this sounds really good. There's been some controversy about whether the systems really are truly encompass everything within the enterprise, whether they focus on all of the necessary resources, or whether they do a great job of planning. And so you can uh, take issue with any one of these points of view. But I think that it's easy to say that these systems really are a step in the right direction in each of these different dimensions. So if you're thinking about implementing an ERP system, you really need to understand what this change of view to the company-wide multi-resource view looks like. And so I've got two more slides to show you to explain it. First is businesses are frequently um, focused around tasks. So in your organization, it may be that you have one order entry department, you've got a shipping department that's out in a warehouse or a different um, facility completely. You have a billing department that invoices orders, and you've got an accounts receivable department that does both collections and cash receipts processing. Each of these departments historically could have gone out and bought an individual application to optimize their operations. And although there would be local optimization, it's unclear whether there was global or company-wide optimization. And so ERP systems take a process view and say, really, this is the sales process. And so rather than having individual departments with individual systems, the system is going to be able to take information from each department and pass it up and down the process so that sufficient information is available to make really good decisions. And once ERP got in place, by taking this process view, the functionality has extended beyond what was available historically. And so, for example, within the sales process, post-sales support is now a common functionality within an ERP space. And it really helps management evaluate the success or the failure of their business much better. If you have high sales, but you have a lot of returns or a lot of technical support issues or a lot of replacement parts that are needed, obviously your organization isn't as successful as it could be. Additionally, if you can involve product development in with the whole sales process, you'll most likely have better information being fed to the product development group so that the products and the services that your organization offers better meet what the customer needs are. And additionally, if product development is involved with sales, it may be able to share information about upcoming releases or product versions so that customers can be better informed. So really, the sales process is a holistic view of how do we give inventory or services and get cash from our customers. But it's more important that that overall view be taken than any individual step. And I'll show you why that is really an important view, that in an ERP solution, it's all integrated. And so this picture shows you um, a, a graphical representation of what might happen with one customer order. The colors represented on the screen are there because ERP systems are usually sold in modules that are pre-integrated to make one unified solution. If an organization were to buy the whole system, um, if we started with the customer tries to place an order, and imagine that we're with a bicycle company, the customer places an order for 100 bikes. During order processing, whether that's being taken online, whether it's um, during a phone conversation, the order processing system is able to check with the inventory management module to determine whether there's sufficient inventory available for that customer order. If there's not, the system can automatically ask the customer, would you like to back order 
your order? Would you like to get shipment for the ones that we currently have in stock and wait for the others? Would you like to get the shipment of what's currently in stock and cancel the rest of the order? If they end up canceling, we'll know that that's lost sales, so that's better information. Ideally, they'll say they'd like to um, continue with the order and perhaps even wait and get everything shipped at once so that they can reduce their shipping costs. If they make that choice, then what happens is the system will automatically trigger within the inventory management that we need to produce the additional bikes. Inventory management will check with the bill of materials to identify whether there's sufficient raw materials on hand. If there aren't sufficient materials, then the system will trigger a procurement transaction where we'll order the raw materials from our suppliers and we'll wait for their receipt. When the inventory comes in, um, inventory is received into the system. It will simultaneously update the financial system for what's owed and the inventory levels that we have. It'll update the accounts payable so that it'll trigger a future payment. And it'll update inventory management that the inventory is available. When we have all of the raw materials and we have the, the order for production scheduled, the manufacturing module will fire up. We'll use equipment within the factory, the requisitioned human resources necessary. We'll build those bikes within the warehouse. When they're built, then a message can go back and say, this order is ready to be shipped and shipping can be triggered. When shipping is triggered, it goes to the warehouse, finds out where those finished goods are, reduces the quantity of finished goods, that are on hand in inventory management, updates the status of the order to say that the order is being shipped, and updates the financial system when we do the, the shipment to say that now the customer owes us for those um, bikes. We'll then wait and for the customer to send cash in, and when the cash is received, the accounts receivables will be updated so that we know that the customer no longer, longer owes us and the financial system will be updated to increase the cash and reduce the amount of accounts receivable. All of those transactions would have occurred automatically as a result of the customer placing the order and being willing to accept a back order from our system. So I hope this, this illustration shows that an enterprise resource planning system is really enterprise-wide, is going to focus on providing the necessary information throughout a process and is going to integrate all of the different functions within an organization so that they can, uh, they can perform their tasks more effectively and be aware of how the activities that they perform influence those further in the process. So that's the short story for an enterprise resource planning. Continue with our videos. We'll have more on what are the strategic decisions that need to be made and what are the risks that you might be facing. Thanks.